morning, everyone. I'm Brennan Northey, uh, president of Avon Court, the Home Builders Association. I'm here with Mitch Cleary from Century 21. And uh, um, I've asked Mitch to be here today because not only is Mitch uh, active in the real estate market, but he comes from a very long line of uh, builders and developers, the Cleary family in Peterborough, so really understand the issues. The reason we're, we're doing this today is, um, there was, I don't know if you've read it, Mitch, I think it just came out, but it's a new piece of research done by Dr. Mike Moffat of the mm -hmm. Prosperity Institute mm -hmm. of the University of Ottawa. It's called Baby Needs a New Home. Mm -hmm. And what it really addresses is the significant lack of supply of homes in Ontario mm -hmm. uh, to the tune of we're short 65,000 homes right now. But what this report says is that in Ontario in the next 10 years, we need to build 1 million homes in 10 years. Does that sound like a lot of homes to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds like a lot of homes in the way that our trajectory has shifted in the last uh, five years. Um, so absolutely. And, and one thing we talked about Garnet, before we started uh, filming was what that means, what, what it's brought us to right now in the market. And, and uh, I just thought I'd chime in quickly to mention uh, the really the, the pain that's being felt out there. there it's, it's, it's real suffering happening from people on the ground that can't afford to get into these homes. And people are, are constantly being totally, totally let down when they realize how far their money can take them in this market. And a lot of people are getting extremely deterred. And, and there's a lot of really negative follow-up effects of that. And I've seen people that are working perfectly good jobs that, that earned them an income that, that years ago they could have afforded to own a home and they did strive for it. They were just waiting to save up their down payment. And now like a mirage overnight, the, the, the prospect of, of buying a home or buying anything they deem to be livable for their family has totally disappeared. Yeah, it has. And, and you know, we hear all kinds of reasons for housing prices right now. We hear about the bidding wars. It comes down to one simple fact. We don't have enough. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have enough of something, everyone's going to pay whatever it takes to get that. And that eliminates so many people from the housing market. And the one thing that we talk about with the home builders a lot, because people always connect the dots between that new luxury subdivision being built or mm -hmm. condos and the person on the street living in a tent. Mm -hmm. And it's something called the housing continuum. So if we all reflect kind of on our own journey, mm -hmm. um, you know, touch wood, I was never homeless. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you think of the average person, you graduate from school and you want to move away from mom and dad and you mm -hmm. look for that first rental. Mm -hmm. And then as you save and save, maybe you get a bigger rental, mm -hmm. if it's available. Um, and you can afford it. And then mm -hmm. from there you buy an entry level home and, and mm -hmm. it just continues through that. But what, what happens is now you're, you're vacating those mm -hmm. spaces. Mm -hmm. Now with the housing continuum, people go, well, you know, how does building a luxury home connect to a homeless person? Well, mm -hmm. um, as people move into those luxury homes, again, all the way behind them, people are moving up. Mm -hmm. So suddenly now there is a subsidized rental unit mm -hmm. that I can get into and get me off the street. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to work towards getting into market rental. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I'd love to own a little home. You know, yeah. that, and that's a dream that is disappearing in this country. It is absolutely shameful. And, and it's just because we don't have the supply. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? So the urgency is there. We cannot mm -hmm. stress enough the urgency as you see what's going on in the marketplace. It's absolutely. It's, it's unacceptable. The time is already overdue and we're at a point of, of no return at, for in some instances. And if we don't act now, there's a lot of uh, things that are uh, in this system that are at the, the brink of breaking down in terms of yeah. people's uh, mental health uh, and well-being. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and you know, we within our own board, um, we have Susan from Habitat for Humanity and, and, and they prove time and time again that when people own a safe, home, when they're in that home, their kids do better in school, mm -hmm. they have better health, mm -hmm. physically and mentally, mm -hmm. and that, that's what's at stake here. So so I, what does that mean for people? Mm -hmm. So on average, say we build 350 homes a year. Which is a pretty good approximate number. Yeah, good yeah. approximate number. Yep. And we need to get that to 600. <sighs> like that's a big jump. And and, and people go, why, why, why don't we just do that? Well, mm -hmm. we don't do it because we're having a real issue right now with getting plans of development approved. Mm -hmm. um, there is so much red tape. There is so much regulation in place that, you know, you, when I talk to developers and builders, they go, well, I got through that study and now they want me to do another study and spend mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. Now they want me to do this and now they want me to do this. And 
before they get it off the ground, it can be 10, 20, 30 years to get that development going and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. No ability to adapt smartly to the market's true needs at that time. It's not at all. There's no, no it's not reality. Yeah. And then people, well, how come houses are so expensive? Well, you've got to pay for those studies somewhere. So that also adds to it, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that becomes a real issue. So I guess... And then really not to mention, so Gara, just because I, uh, to catch it, because beyond all of the, uh, any government imposed regulations, uh, one thing that is consistently in all of our talks and a lot of talks generally right now that have deemed to be one of the number one uh, enemies in the situation is Nimbius, not my backyard. Exactly. And that is creating a lot of the issues, a lot of the pressures that the government bodies, municipal government bodies are feeling are on account of that. They might be pro-development and then when push comes to shove and they finally go to move something forward that they're excited about, they get so much backlash from the community that they have to overturn it because there's too much pressure on them. Yeah. So can you speak to NIMBYism a little oh, bit? Absolutely, absolutely. It's one of the biggest hurdles. It's very frustrating. So, and I would ask people out there, do you want housing prices to come down mm -hmm. in this city in Toronto and Ontario? Do you think they're out of line? Do you think they're exorbitant? If the answer is yes, stop and think about how you're catering to them. Mm -hmm. What can they do exactly? What yeah. can people do? Yeah, because what, what I see happening, what we see happening is those people out there, and I'm speaking to you out there now, if you own a home in the city of Peterborough, you're probably in a subdivision. At one time, that would have been a subdivision. You have that comfort, you have that security of owning your own home, and yet you are preventing the next generation from having that same security that you now enjoy. And I don't think that's fair. So I would ask people to think beyond their own front door. Think of the future generation, their own children, their own grandchildren, and go, you know what? I may not totally like it, but it is necessary, and this is the country I live in. I will no longer put up roadblocks to prevent people from having that home and that prosperity and that family situation mm -hmm. that I enjoy. That would be our ask. So the, the report is called Baby Needs a New Home. Mm -hmm. If you go onto the PKHPA website, uh, we have it, you can connect there and read the report. And just see for yourself that everyone who owns a home has a role in ensuring new people can own a home and new families can own a home. And I'm sorry it has to be in your backyard, whether you are to have it. <laughs> yeah. This is a community. Yeah. Please support your community and help move these developments and these applications through. The other ask I would have is for our own council is please make these decisions locally. Let these developments happen. Let these homes get built. And try and avoid the the effort for that five minutes of popularity and approve these rather than forcing builders and developers to appeal it up to the LPAT and wait months and months and months to get some homes built for our neighbors here in mm -hmm. and That's pretty much what we wanted to cover today. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Sense of urgency. We need everybody to feel uh, communally. We're trying to join the voices of anybody yeah. who has a stake in the game here. Um, to feel that the, the time is long overdue for some change in, in the way that we bring homes to the market. Everybody's feeling the pain here. We have to work together. And a lot of people have to, to look look at the man in the mirror to, to, to decide where the change is gonna happen. Because a lot of people, you, if you're not willing to have a development uh, position near you where you currently live, uh, unfortunately, that's, that type of attitude is, is a, a big hindrance to moving forward. Yeah. So not to put you on the spot, do you have a story of any client that you've dealt with or a family that is really in that crisis because they just cannot find that security. Many, yeah. many. Um, it's so, so there's, I, I have specific instances uh, without, without isolating anybody, but there's all kinds of people that have young families that uh, going from one to two children or looking to start a home to get a family uh, that, that just can't, can't break into it. They're um, stuck looking at uh, dilapidated wartime housing and, and the prices that they have to pay to buy some of this housing now, they have no money left for a renovation budget. We're talking about homes that were built to be temporary, uh, you know, 80 years ago, and they are still standing there in need of major repair. They're selling for nearly $500,000 now. We're having people that are working uh, good, healthy jobs in this city 
uh, that are only being pre-approved into the mid fours and, and, and not that long ago that was an adequate amount of money for, for a reasonable home and now they're looking at half a million dollars for wartime housing there's no money left to renovate there's absolutely scrapped as it is and then if interest rates move they're they're even worse off so um, I know lots of people that would like to move ahead and start a family or grow a family to the next level or have grown a family and are stuck with an inadequate amount of bedrooms with an inadequate yard and they feel absolutely trapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not the story that you and I grew up in in Canada mm -hmm. or in Peterborough. Mm -hmm. So so that's all we had to say today. We just wanted to talk about that again. Go to the Peterborough Court, the Home Builders Association website, uh, check out the baby needs a new home because there's a lot of babies out there need a new home. Thanks. Thanks awesome. a lot. Thanks, awesome. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Appreciate well, it. Thanks. Yeah.